how do we design for people that there are more people than ever before, there are more people living in cities, we have a deteriorating environment, we have fewer resources, it costs a ton of money to build these things, uh, what do we do? In 2015 at TED Talk, Michael Green spoke about how smart cities could solve those global issues. A decade ago, this term was unknown, but these days everything is becoming smart. So what are those so-called smart cities? In his speech, Michael Green also defines smart city as design and technology integrated into the urban fabric itself. And yes, that statement is very vague. However, this study by S.O. Tsehyun, which studied all articles related to smart cities and selected common keyword descriptions, defines it by eight core categories. ICT technologies, improvement of civil functions, environment and climate change, economic growth, life quality, civil service and governance. For example, this study shows how it can affect mobility aspects of supply chain. It gives an example of New York City with traffic management systems that detect congestion choke points in real time and adjust traffic signals accordingly. Moreover, the traffic information will also be available to drivers through cell phones. But the biggest article about smart cities is published by Stantec along with ESI, Thought Lab and the Coalition of Partners. The research itself shows how smart cities perform. They have found that most cities are seeing major economic, financial and social benefits from their investments in smart technologies. According to the study, 38% of cities deploying smart mobility solutions are bolstering customer satisfaction and 32 are improving productivity and delivery times for businesses. Likewise, 45% of cities deploying smart environmental and energy initiatives are improving citizen health. 44% are reducing pollution and 43% are stabilizing energy prices. But how accurate are these findings? For those who doesn't know, Fantech is top 9th company in the world among design firms in 2019 according to ENR or otherwise engineering news record, which is also one of the most reputable journals in engineering and construction. ESI Thought Lab, on the other hand, specializes in analyzing the impact of technological, economic and demographic shifts on industries, cities and companies. It boasts with big clients like Visa, Mastercard, Cisco, JP Morgan, Oracle and many more. Aside from the fact that both companies are world leaders in their fields and have vast resources in their hands, the study is based on rigorous benchmarking survey conducted over the summer of 2019 by ESI Thought Lab and the cross-industry coalition of sponsors including Deloitte, Oracle, Stantec, Pinoni, Eton Lighting, Entity Group, Nokia, Cognizant, Visa and Microsoft. The sample consisted of huge amount of cities engaged in smart city initiatives, to be specific 100 cities around the world. Cities varied in size from 123,000 to over 24 million residents and represented a range of income levels, regions and stages of economic development. By the year 2030, it's believed that more than 60% of world population will be in cities, dramatically changing how we live. For that matter, the speed of technological change has been brisk. Public Wi-Fi, Internet of Things, Cloud and Mobile technology are now pervasive across cities. They were used by more than 9 out of 10 cities in the study. Other commonly used technologies include biometrics, artificial intelligence, blockchain. Subscription to this channel and smashing the like button for this video, 99% of the cities. Robots and drones, 5G, augmented reality and distributed computing are promising new technologies which are still in early stage of investment. By using these technologies to transform and interconnect their urban ecosystem, government leaders aim to deliver a myriad of benefits to their stakeholders. These include creating new business opportunities, filling talent gaps, improving public health, reducing crime, boosting productivity and addressing income inequality. These benefits, study says, work together to deliver a virtuous circle of economic prosperity, business growth and social well-being. Shift from the research we are pursuing with ESI is providing valuable insight into how cities are approaching smart technologies, what they see as their top priorities, their pain points and their solutions. 
Making the place we live more vibrant, healthy and resilient through a thoughtful design requires taking a community-first approach. And that means understanding community priorities, said Nancy MacDonald, Stantec Smart Cities lead. These same smart programs also generate economic and financial gains that not only cover the cost of investment but also provide tangible returns. Except for predictive policing, all 62 smart city initiatives studied showed positive investment returns. Study also reveals some actual numbers for return of investment. Here are the list of sectors providing the largest gains. First one is public safety with first aid alerts having 5.6 return, gunshot sensors with 4.8% and real-time crime mapping with 4.7%, totaling to a 15.1% of return. Second one is governance with digital business licensing leading with 5% of return and digital payments with 4.6%, totaling to a 9.6% of return. Energy and water sector comes in third with dynamic electricity pricing having 4.8% return rate and renewable energy with 4.3%, totaling to a 9.1%. Mobility and transportation is fourth and totals to an 8.8%. The last but not the least is environment sector. Basically, what these numbers say is that if you invest on these new technologies, you will cover the cost of investment and gain an additional income. For example, you will cover the cost and gain of 15.1% of the cost as an income for public safety sector. However, keep in mind that these sectors are not the only ones. They are only ones that are publicly shown and of no particular order, since there might be other subdivisions that were not included. But it all sounds wonderful and amazing to be true. But here's the downside to it. If not managed effectively, these smart initiatives can also expose urban areas to higher cyber risks. Smart city concept is based on acquisition of a lot of data. Data which is almost about everything that is going on around an individual. The potential of this data is very huge and can reveal a lot of things about the individuals. Once privacy aspects are compromised, there is a big threat to safety and security of individuals. The systems should be designed with multi-layer of security layer and security shouldn't really be easily available in the hands of bad elements. For cities in the survey, the total cost of cyber loss events over the last year averaged 3.4 million US dollars, with 10% of cities suffering huge losses between 10 million and 20 million US dollars. Over half of the cities said that they were not well prepared for cyber attacks. The biggest vulnerabilities cited were financial and payment systems, 54% of cities, IT infrastructure and telecoms, 51%, and mobility and transportation, 40%. To cope with rising cyber risks, 82% of cities plan to increase their cybersecurity budget next year. Moreover, according to another study by Brownie and Gomez in 2011, traffic jams, for example, are inevitable with the current transportation systems, no matter how sophisticated the employed technologies are. At most, damage can be reduced but not eliminated. But they also support that those practices such as congestion charge, low emission zone or car-free policies affect the urban logistics. There are also smaller problems like battery replacement and charging issues. Smart City is based on a large number of sensors and other Internet of Thing devices spread across different places. Each of these devices and sensors operate with the help of battery. Though the design is done such that there is no requirement for recharge or replacement of these batteries for a long time, whenever the replacement is required, it is likely to be a very costly and tedious affair. But economical aspect as was shown by ESI, Thought Lab study is not a problem in the long run. Then, what is its future potential and real-world application? Data will be the beating heart of the smart city, collecting data from residents, the vehicles, and remaining infrastructure in the city. The goal will always be to assess patterns or inefficiencies to better improve living standards for the citizens. In transportation sector, we will have autonomous vehicles, 
cars not only being able to drive itself but also cars capable of understanding their surrounding environment and collect data to make decisions. In the energy sector, we will have smart grids, which will constantly communicate with itself, sending energy to areas in the city that may need even more power, while conserving energy in places of the city that might not need it. There is also a potential smart infrastructure. With the data collected, city planners and architects could create buildings that are optimized for people based on previous data. As for the example of smart cities, there are already several cities utilizing smart technologies. For example, New York. The city is currently undergoing digital transformation to make the government more responsive, save costs, enhance efficiency, and better analyze what's happening in New York. Singapore is another example. Its Smart Nation program was launched in 2014 and involved installing lots of sensors around the city. These sensors will pick up a massive amount of information about what citizens do on a daily basis. They can measure everything from how clean a certain area is to how crowded an event is. The government then gets a real-time look at what's happening in the city. Barcelona has tons of initiatives happening that consistently landed on the list of top smart cities. One major project the city has been working on is to have citywide free Wi-Fi coverage available. Currently, you can access free Wi-Fi nearly everywhere in the city. Oslo Oslo stands out among smart cities for its emphasis on creating a sustainable, eco-friendly environment. While smart cities and sustainable cities are a bit different, Oslo counts as both. This city has over 650,000 LED lights that are all connected to processing stations. These lights can intelligently adjust the amount of lighting based on current needs. But that's not all. Oslo also uses smart license plate detectors to come up with a data-based way to improve traffic congestion. All major megacities are already using something related to smart cities. All world-leading cities directed in smart and sustainable direction. As the time goes by, these concepts are becoming more and more reality and important. To sum it up, I will quote what CEO of the ESI Thought Lab said himself regarding this project. Our research shows that hyper-connected cities that use technology to transform and interconnect their urban assets generate demonstrable return of investment for their economies while providing enormous improvements in living and business conditions, said Luicelli.